For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On behalf of the congregation of A Street Baptist Church, I would like to again thank First Baptist Temple for this opportunity. We were away for a couple of weeks because of the winter freeze, but thank God it's uh, hopefully come to an end. I don't know whether or not we're going to have another freeze. But today we're going to be looking in the Old Testament in the book of Ezekiel. And you look at the 30th chapter, and we're going to look at the first three verses. Uh, it would be good if you could read that entire passage. We're going to deal with, and I think the first three verses captures the, the sermon today. And it says, And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, on the seventh day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and see, it has not been bandaged for healing, nor a splint put on to bind it, to make it strong enough to hold a sword. And therefore, thus says the Lord God, Surely I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and will break his arms, both the strong one and the one that was broken, and I will make the sword fall out of his hand. Today we're going to be simply talking about love lifted us. Love lifted us. Uh, we would be teasing ourselves if we did not admit that during our lives that this has been some year, this past year, 2020. But there have always been some good days and some bad days. For some of us, there are great highs and great thrills and great accomplishments and great achievements and great blessings and great moments that cannot be fully described. And conversely, there have been some times of great lows and great disappointments. There is an element that ties the good and the bad together. And it's a principle that most of us learned in school and mathematics class. It was called the common denominator. In life, there is a common denominator. That is the presence of the Lord in our lives. You see, my brothers and sisters, God is the common denominator in every joy and pain in our lives. He is, he has, and he will be with us every step of the way. And so I'm convinced that God not only does things that we know about, but I'm equally convinced that God has been working behind the scenes to do some things that we were not aware of. God has held back some sickness and trouble. He's held back some enemies. God has held back things that would have broken us in two. And he's held back elements that would have destroyed us. He's held back some people that would have discouraged us and some dangers that had our name on them. He's taken care of us in the past, and he's done whatever has been necessary to secure our safety and secure our sanity and secure our soul's well-being. And this level of care does not end at midnight or at the end of your Sunday morning services. Uh, his companionship, his caretaking, his, his concern, his compassion has no ending. God's love lifts us. So our text today centers on an interesting period in history for the people of Judah. They are in Babylonian captivity and they are a target of hostilities and primarily coming from an old enemy, Egypt. 
Most people think that Egypt never bothered God's people again once the conflict between Moses and Pharaoh was over. However, Moses was dead, and that Pharaoh was dead and gone. But now there is a new conflict. Egypt's Pharaoh, Hophra, has gone to war with Judah's king, Nebuchadnezzar, over the nation of Judah. And people are caught in a battle between Pharaoh, who would destroy them if given a chance, and Babylon's conquering king, Nebuchadnezzar, of whom God has decided would wield the sword of God's justice. And so my first point is that God knows the enemies. Judah, God's people, are caught in a conflict between Egypt and Babylon. Both nations want control of Judah. Her people, her resources, her bright minds, her intellectual properties, but God is against one enemy, and he uses another enemy for his purpose. Has there anyone ever lived on this street? God is against one enemy of yours, while he uses another enemy to teach you something. He allows one enemy to teach you how to pray. He allows one enemy to, uh, to touch your family, but he allows another enemy to develop some patience in your soul. And he allows one enemy not to worry you. He allows another enemy to build your faith in God. And maybe you used to complain about your adversaries, your enemies, and those things that will come against your mind and your spirit. And I've learned, I say I've learned, that God will either keep you or keep them away, or he will allow them access to teach us something some spiritual principles and draw us closer to him. He'll teach us to thank him for illnesses and adversaries and being lied on and talked about because God is either keeping us from something that would have destroyed us or he's developing some things in us spiritually that we didn't have before. Have you ever had a storm in your life and you survived it. The storm would have killed the average person, but God was teaching you that the storm, or in the storm, to trust him. Have you ever had your heart broken by someone that you were in love with? It would have caused the average person to jump off a bridge, but God was teaching you that he loves you and that he will take care of you no matter what happens. Have you ever had problems to pop up just out of nowhere? And you thought you were not going to make it. And then when the problems were over, you might have a limp, but you're still going. You may be bowed over, but you're still going. You might be living in an apartment when you used to live in a four-bedroom house, but you're still going. And you see, God either takes your circumstances to teach you or he's keeping some things away from you for your own good. And your Egypts have been kept from you for a reason. Egypt represents those things that it could have destroyed you, put you in bondage and altered you physically and spiritually. But God kept it from you. As much as some of us have messed up, God has kept some things from us. He's kept some suicide demons from us. He's kept cancer from us and heart attacks from us and strokes from us. And, and, and he knows your enemies. He either allows them to teach you or teach us. And, and, and he keeps some things from us completely. God knows your enemies. And Pharaoh Hophra would try to attack. And he was defeated. Secondly, God knows how to handle things in your life. When you read this text, God says that through the prophet of God, Ezekiel, that God has broken the arm me of Pharaoh, his armies, the power of his government. But notice, God didn't just break his arm. A strong man with one broken arm can come back just as healthy as he can 
after that arm is healed because the God knows us. And normally when a man would break his arm, he would have his arm placed to his side and he would be tethered to his body using swaddling cloths. However, God says, this time I'm not going to allow your enemy to come back on you like he did before. Thank God there are some enemies and devils uh, that he crippled and rendered helpless, and he's not going to let them regroup. There are some problems that people uh, uh, have encountered, even some problem people, some disturbed people, some troubled people, that, that God literally had to break them, and he's not allowing them to come back and hurt you. The Old Testament declares the Egyptians you see today, you will never see them again because God is against them and he knows how to handle them. And even to the point of not just allowing a broken arm, he says, I didn't just break the strong one. I went after the weaker one and broke that one too. Not for their sake, but for your sake. You may have some residual fear in your bones. So God says, I will break the strong arm and it will cause a sword to fall out of your enemy's hand. God goes further to say, and he says, I will scatter the Egyptians among other nations, and I will strengthen the arms of the ones who have been holding you, the Babylonians, so that Egypt will seem like a dead man walking. And God knows how to handle things. God does it with power, and he does it with authority. And what's interesting here is that he knows how to strategically handle your situation. You see, he knows how to handle your pain strategically. He knows how to walk through heartbreak strategically. He knows how to bring you to recovery strategically. And he knows how to restore you strategically. He can wipe the tears from your eyes strategically. He knows how to feed you when you're hungry, strategically. He knows how to heal your body, strategically. He knows how to turn your test into a testimony, strategically. And God's strategy is tied to his will. Judah was still under Babylonian captivity, but they were protected. Judah was still under Babylonian control, yet they were protected. Judah was still first to give up their language and way of life, but they were protected. Judah could have been back in slavery, but they were protected. And you, you may not have everything you want, and we may not have everything we all want, but you're still protected. And goes how, God knows how to handle things strategically. He, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time, strategically. And lastly, God knows how to give you the victory. He'll give you the victory. And at the end of this story, Ezekiel says to Judah, Egypt and Babylon, when I get finished doing what I have to do by scattering Egypt and dispersing them through other countries, then they shall know that I am Jehovah. He healed the sea ear of Malchus without a plastic surgeon. He delivered Paul and Silas from jail without a warden. He resurrected Jesus without an executive producer. And he gave us grace and mercy. And he continues to order the steps of those that have a personal relationship with him. And in our heritage, even as African Americans, reflects an evil Pharaoh-like existence. We were enslaved for over 400 years, at just like the Hebrew children. But love lifted us out of the misery of slavery. God broke both arms of slave masters who wanted us for free labor. We were a human commodity. But God gave us the victory. 
And when an emancipation proclamation gave our forefathers freedom, the love of God had lifted us. And as I close, I, I need to remind us that Judah's Hebrew name means praise, but just not ordinary praise. Its root word is yada, which means praise. Praise for God's presence. Praise for God's power and praise for God's provision. Praise for what he has done for us. And is there anybody that's listening and watching today that can help me praise the Lord for what he's doing right now? Is there anyone who can praise God for the tears that he's wiped away? And so let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. He came down through 42 generations, born in a manger, astonished scholars in a Jewish temple at the age of 12. Walked the earth for three and a half years, performing miracles. He had no possessions except a garment, which was gambled when he was hung on an old rugged cross. Oh, yes, he died. He died. And, but when he was an infant, he frightened the king. When he was a man, he made a storm stand still. He never composed a song, but geniuses have brought their talent and laid it at his feet. Herod couldn't kill him. Satan couldn't seduce him. Sin couldn't stand him. Sinners can't resist him. Death could not destroy him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Because early on a Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He's the rose of Sharon for those who don't have beauty in their lives. He's a priest bearing himself for our sin offering. Jesus Christ, God, enough for us. And when our journey is over, he will be God enough for us in glory. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Master, for lifting us when we need lifting, being our conqueror when we need a conqueror. Master, we thank you for not only who you are, but what you are and what you continue to be to us. You've been our help in ages past, and surely you're our hope in years to come. We ask, Master, that you just continue to walk with us and continue to whisper to us and whisper that you will be with us all the way to the end. We ask all these blessings in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen.